we are in session. All right, uh, welcome to the uh, meeting that we're going to have this evening. And this is a meeting that is not a hearing, uh, nor is, a, is it a debating uh, forum. Uh, it is a it has several functions. One is to introduce you to the members, like myself, who are newly appointed. Uh, we do have one member here, Mr. Callum, who has been on board for some time and remains on it. So we will introduce ourselves and tell you a little bit about ourselves. And uh, then we will move on. So once again, if you do have a cell phone, please make sure that you have uh, uh, silenced it or put it on vibrate, at least. Okay. Uh, and did everybody get the, the one, of the, one of the papers that's in the back? I'll discuss those in a, in a few moments. Uh, and I welcome you all. Thank you for coming. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, under the laws of the state of Maryland, under the open meeting laws, this is a meeting among the board. It is not a meeting for debate or discussion. Uh, and uh, we do not take comments from uh, the people who are here. These are strictly among us under the open meetings clause. There is no requirement for uh, taking uh, any kind of specific uh, uh, well, discussion or debate or whatever from people who are in attendance, unless, of course, there's a hearing that involves them. Obviously, then we will listen to you. Uh, the board members are uh, going to talk to you a little bit about themselves and their background. Uh, I've been asked to start, so I'll start. Uh, my name is Fred Smalkin. I uh, am retired as United States District Judge for the District of Maryland. Uh, before that, I was United States Magistrate. Uh, 27 years of federal judicial experience altogether. I uh, teach law at the University of Maryland. I did there and I teach at the University of Baltimore. I also do uh, arbitrations and mediations for a company called Jams ADR. Uh, and that is uh, what I've done since I have retired. And um, I have had su substantial uh, kinds of uh, experiences over my lifetime with firearms. I think I had my first uh, firearm at 14, and I was uh, in the, a member of the regular army for eight years, started out in the Ordnance Corps. The idea of the Ordnance Corps is to fix everything that everybody else broke. So uh, it included lots of things that I learned about. And I uh, wound up eventually going to the Pentagon and spent uh, four years there, uh, ending as the general counsel or as assistant general counsel of the Army uh, General <coughs> Council, working directly for the Secretary of the Army. Uh, after that, became United States Magistrate, then became a uh, United States District Judge. I had some uh, very small degree of police experience, and that's when I was a Deputy Game Warden of the state, of which they do not have any anymore, and also a Federal Deputy Game Warden, of which they don't have any anymore. So I guess after me, they decided to get rid of them. Um, so that had obviously had uh, uh, constabulary power with it, but not the way it is today, only for game and fish, not like things are today. So uh, that's about it. I, I uh, have had firearms all my life, and uh, I know how to use them, and uh, I know they're, uh, the firearm itself is not usually a problem, it's the people. And we're here to take a look at that and to fairly and reasonably uh, review the particular actions that were taken by the Maryland State Police. All right, uh, that's all I have to say, and I'm going to turn it over to the, uh, my deputy here, and uh, he is Jim Ballard, and he will introduce himself to you. Good evening. My name is Jim Ballard, and uh, as the colleagues that many of you know, I'm retired in Maryland State Police, which I retired in 2003. After that time, I went to uh, federal service and went to the Pentagon. And at that time, I went through different ranks, but I eventually became the chief of police at the Pentagon. Uh, I was in charge of all law enforcement and security, and I later became a, a member of the Senior Executive Service, SES, and again, was responsible for about 1,200 people down there. 
During that time, I also was responsible for 400 contract security officers who all had handgun permits that fell under the umbrella of the company they worked for. But just, I, uh, I pride myself on being an upfront person and direct, and I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of where I'm coming from as a member of this board. I believe handgun permits are a valuable tool to our community, but I also believe not everyone qualifies or should have a handgun just because they want one. While in federal service, I saw firsthand how the opinion of special interest groups, the pull of political preference, and the pension of personal convenience had a direct conflict with regulations and laws. Um, during that time, I was able to put my personal and political preferences aside regarding decisions on those policies and focus on being fair and equitable in any decision made between <clears throat> all sides involved. I understand that during these hearings, there will be cases with extenuating circumstances when they appear. I promise to take a look at them objectively by their merit. Uh, but I will tell you that uh, allowing exceptions to policy and setting a precedent is not something I take lightly. As a member of this board, I promise to be fair and impartial, to look at each case for the individual substance. I have no predetermined allegiance to any special interest group, to the Maryland State Police, or any political party. My, my goal, like everyone else sitting up here with you today, is to demonstrate the utmost integrity and to do what's right for everyone counting on a fair decision from this board. Okay. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cowan. <clears throat> my name is John Cowan. I've been reappointed to the board. This is my uh, second term. I am currently a 36-year veteran from the uh, Montgomery County Police Department. I specialize in firearms crimes, <clears throat> excuse me, and violent, uh, violent nature crimes. I'm also attached to uh, Bureau of Alcohol, uh, Tobacco, Fires, and Explosives. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, my name is Dan Crowley. I'm a lifelong resident of the state. After graduating from high school in Montgomery County, I enlisted in the Army. I served as a military policeman uh, in reserves throughout uh, college at the University of Maryland, where I studied business, uh, and then went and did a joint degree in law and public policy. My first job at Maryland Law School was uh, as counsel to the Montgomery County Delegation of the State Senate, uh, so I understand the system and how it works. Uh, I then uh, went to Capitol Hill uh, for eight years, serving in legal counsel position and increasing the senior positions, ultimately as counsel to the speaker. When the speaker resigned, I went downtown and, uh, for a decade, headed government affairs for the NASD, which is now known as FINRA, then the NASDAQ stock market then the Investment Company Institute uh, on September 15th of 08, uh, which is a day I remember because it's a day that Lehman declares uh, bankruptcy. I joined the law firm of k &L Gates, where I'm currently an equity partner. Uh, and I'm happy to be here, uh, having been appointed by the governor to this important position. Uh, I will tell you that uh, having, Fred, having appointed uh, Fred Smalkin as the, as the chairman, uh, will tell you the seriousness uh, with which the governor takes these issues. So I'm just glad to be here. Thank you, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you all have or have available to you this agenda. And the agenda that we have is an agenda that we'll be taking uh, a vote on from the panel here very shortly. That is the main business uh, that we are doing today. I might uh, just say as a preface to it that uh, you should have or you could have gotten a white paper with regard to the burden of proof. Uh, I created the white paper. It's not something that uh, was done uh, you know, in, in camera or in any other kind of uh, way. I just put it together, uh, and it is uh, my view, and I have shared it with the members of the board uh, by giving them copies of it as to the burden of proof in cases such as this. And uh, this is what uh, we, I think, unanimously uh, looked at. and. Uh, it is not a formal paper of the state government. It is simply a, an explanation of the view that I have and uh, that uh, would be reflected if it is passed in the <coughs> agenda uh, meeting that you have in front of you. So at this time, uh, what I'm going to do is to call upon the members of the board uh, with regard to any comments, suggestions, etc. That they may have with regard to the uh, rules and regulations that are proposed to be enacted upon this evening. Uh, gentlemen, I'll start uh, Mr. Crowley with you. Do you have any comment with regard to it? No, I just uh, thank you for your work in putting this together. All right. So, Mr. Callan, you have some more comments? 
Yes, sir. All right. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, we'll move on. Is there a motion uh, for the adoption of the uh, proposed rules and regulations that are in the agenda for this evening? So moved. Any second? All right. All in favor, raise your hand. All right. Unanimously, these uh, <coughs> are, are now part of the rules and regulations of the review board, and they will remain as such unless uh, ordered by appropriate legal authority to change them. Uh, they will stay the way they are as of tonight. Um, let's see here. The uh, next thing I want to talk about is the location of hearings. Uh, we have traditionally, as you know, had hearings right where you are. Well, they've been all over the place, but they've wound up here. Uh, that is going to change. Uh, one of the things that the board has is by a majority voting on where and when hearings will be held. And uh, <clears throat> right now, uh, we're not positive of it, but we have a, about a 90% guarantee that uh, we will be given the use of the uh, Donald Schaefer room on fourth floor of the 4th, 5th Regiment Armory in Baltimore. Uh, this will put things centralized into the city so that uh, we have people coming from north and south and east and west. And uh, it, uh, the armory, uh, I assume most of you know where the 5th Regiment Armory is. Is there anyone who doesn't know where the 5th Regiment Armory is? Uh, 5th Regiment Armory is uh, right next to the 301 Preston Street office buildings. Uh, you can't miss it because it looks like a castle out of the Middle Ages. Uh, so it's, you know, it's right there. Uh, and that's where we propose to have meetings uh, henceforth. But that doesn't mean it will be the only place. It may be from time to time we would move to another location for a hearing. Uh, and uh, there might be times when the armory is not available and we might have to schedule hearings somewhere other places. Traditionally, I think uh, there have been two hearings a month, is that correct? Mm -hmm. On Tuesdays. Uh, I think that will change the first docket that will go out, and we're going to have a docket, and I'll mention that to you here shortly. The first docket sheet that will go out will uh, be scheduled for Mondays, and uh, because we have, as you know, obviously, all of you, because you have some interest in being here, as you know, uh, there is a substantial backlog of cases. So uh, what we have decided to do is to have four hearings a month. Uh, I suppose if there's a, a month with five Mondays in it, it be five hearings. But uh, every Monday, except Mondays that are uh, state or federal holidays, and when the availability is just not there, and we don't want people to have to come out anyway on holidays. So those are the, the typical holidays that will close the armory. Uh, the uh, armory is old, but it is a uh, it has a very very good uh, part in on the fourth floor. Uh, any of you ever been to it to the the Donald Schaefer room? Okay, it's in the Donald Schaefer room, uh, which is a very nice surrounding. It's comfortable. It has. Uh, nice chairs uh, and tables and things like that. So uh, that's where we will be. Uh, we don't have a 100% from the National Guard yet, but uh, it is certainly uh, in, the, in the works. Let's see here. We'll plan to start at 1800, 6 o'clock p.m., as has been the uh, course in the past. And uh, we'll be held there, as I said, at the armory without for, with, without. Uh, unless there is some reason not to have it there in a particular time. Now, we do have a docket prepared, and this is probably something new. Uh, as soon as we get the absolute 100% from the National Guard, uh, Stevie, whom I think many of you have met or know, she is our wonderful administrative person, uh, Stevie will be posting a docket, and the docket will have a number of hearing entries for each of the hearing dates that we have. And uh, hopefully those will go out in the middle of the month before those dockets are heard. So for example, let's look at July. Uh, I think our first uh, hearing will be, what is it in July? Uh, if the 8th would be yeah, the first the 8th, one. If the 8th of July, we're skipping the 
first for reasons of you know things that need to be done administratively. So uh, <clears throat> we would start uh, start getting that out uh, as soon as we have the clearance from the National Guard that we have the armory, so you know where to go. And that means there would be about a two week or 15 day uh, uh, hiatus between the time that the docket is sent and the docket starts being utilized. And that would hope happen every for every month's docket. And we'd hope to get it out 15 days or more before the docket comes up for its first year. Okay? I hope that's clear uh, for everybody. And uh, that will be made uh, notified as per the statute to those who are members uh, or who are going to be applicants uh, in those dockets. They will be given to you in the appropriate fashion and also they will be made public in the appropriate fashion. All right. Um, and uh, this is probably the shortest meeting that we've ever had of the uh, board. We've been on it longer than I have. Uh, I'm going to ask the members of the board whether there are any other matters that ought to be before the board at this time. No? No? Sir? All right. Well, I have no other uh, matters. Uh, as I said, this is not a time for debate. This is a time for coming up with a uh, new set of rules and procedures, which I hope uh, you all are uh, going to take cognizance of. And that will be the way we are going to proceed, as I said, unless there is some good reason to make an alteration, etc. All right. That having been said, I declare this proceeding concluded. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.